Welcome to Manufacturing Talks with Jim Vinofsky. Industry has a million cool stories, and Jim talks to the movers and shakers who are making them happen. Let's dive in. Okay, everybody. <laughs> We're good live. Morning, good morning. We are live from Detroit, downtown Detroit, yes. the American Gear Manufacturers Association Motion and Power Technology Expo. You got it, MPT Expo. We are here with Matt Croson. He is the president of the AGMA. And holy cow. Yeah. It, Great we're to looking see out you. on the showroom floor here. We yeah. are on the floor of the expo. I'm looking out at all the, uh, the exhibitors. And it's starting to pick up. People are getting here. It's still early, though. That's right. That's right. The board's literally just opened. So welcome, Matt. It's yep. great to have you here. Matt and I talked previously um, yeah. we a couple of times. So a little I, bit of heavy metal, a little bit of manufacturing, <laughs> right. and, uh, but a, a lot of fun. Things. Yeah, yeah. I had written about um, the AGMA for Forbes and then also had yeah. Matt on the show, uh, what, yeah, about six, yeah, I was gonna say about four months ago. Yeah, yeah absolutely, okay. and, uh, and that was great. So, so nice to have you back. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It's great to be here. It's yeah. great to have you. This is our very first podcast oh, live cool. studio cool. in the, in the show, <laughs> and uh, you have a heck of a lineup today with incredible speakers, CEOs, leaders of our industry, and uh, we can't thank you enough for being here and bringing your audience to. Uh, to the where all the gears are right here yes. at MPC Expo. It's well, going to be fun. And what better uh, matchup for a show called Manufacturing Talks yeah. than yeah. American Gear Manufacturers Association, right, yeah. folks? I mean, come on. This is it's literally the building blocks of all of industry. It really is. I mean, you know, uh, we are a quiet little, no one knows what we do, but you know, anything that moves has a gear system, has a drive system enclosed drive open gearing system and what you have here today is about 170 exhibitors we'll have about 2,000 people through the halls ranging from the fords and the and the teslas and the rivians of the world and across to agriculture john deere caterpillar and then you know look small businesses you know folks right. that make yeah. uh popcorn machines they you know uh, all kinds of jetways little little things that you just don't think about and they're here looking for gearing and uh, new systems. So. so, and I'm I'm glad you said that because people yeah. don't think about it. No. You guys are literally in everything. You know, we are. everything that yeah. moves is going to have gear, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah, anything transportation, cruise ships. You know, you know, big and small. We have gears that are uh, 50 to 60 feet wide, and they drive uh, mining. Uh, equipment yep. that's going, you know, two miles down into the earth to pick out all of the things that industry needs to produce the things that we all use every day in our lives. Right. And uh, it's it's an incredible process. Um, we've been around for 108 years, wow. right? Yeah. The association, which means that the industry has been around for 108 years, and and even before that, uh, uh, they you know they've been producing. Uh, these kinds of systems to mm -hmm. kind of make things move. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, it's it's fascinating and yeah. fun. And I think that's the other part of it is that good, good people are in our industry and they're pragmatic, fun-loving, you know, uh, yep. uh, 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 companies that uh, are proud of what they do. And uh, that's kind of a neat experience to meet there, come here. And, and I think what some of us see this as a... Um, a homecoming of sorts, right? right. Where, you yeah. know, once every two years, this is a, a, an area where we convene uh, leaders of industry. And it's funny, we have CEOs here, we have uh, vice presidents of sales and marketing, but we also have a very strong technical program mm -hmm. where we have about 200 engineers coming to uh, keep up with yeah. changes and dynamic metallurgy properties and sure, you know, right. torque ratios that are being investigated and trying to figure out how to fit NVH problems that are in in some of the EV cars and how solve how to solve them, and yep. so it's it's an exciting kind of week. You yeah, know? And, and I'm looking at it. You know, you mentioned kind of that that advance of technology from metallurgy and all that, but you got 3D printing now. So there's right. ways of making gears. And then of course, different things gears are going into. We talked previously yeah. about um, EVs and how people think there's 
Yeah. No gears in those, right. right? No, no, they're gears. <laughs> they're in very important gears because Absolutely. once you get that torque rate up to 8,000 oh, RPM, boy. you got to bring it down. Yep. Um, you know, that's a funny thing, Jim. Um, this show is kind of split into two almost where you have half of the house is really focused on the production of gear. So you yep. have your grinders and your cutting tools and all of the equipment that you need to make a gear. And then the other side of the house are the gear producers and the folks that ultimately use that equipment mm -hmm. to make the products. And the GMs of the world and the Fords of the world and also the smaller companies like to come to both because sometimes they make the decision to produce their own gears yeah. and other times they outsource certain mounts of the gear. So it's, 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 a, it's a nice place to get a total solution set if you're a, a buyer. Well, and to keep yeah. up because yeah, we, we can all get into a rut and be doing yeah. the same thing over and over. And, and it's always cool to get out to these shows and see what people are doing different, people are doing new. You know, we talk about it. Um, you're, you're spot on, Jim. The reality is, is that when you're at, when you're at your home base, you know, you're dealing with the day and a supply chain issue and a yep. customer problem or a breakdown, you know, maintenance of the machine, you know, all these things that human resource issues, right, people are, right. are sick, you know, yep. uh, and then, gosh, you throw COVID into it, you oh, know, it becomes geez, a whole yeah. thing. But the reality is, is when you come out of your business and can, can kind of get to an event like this and just pick your head up a little bit, mm -hmm. scout the area and, yep. and, and really kind of get a sense for where are we going and what does my business need yep. to get there? Right. This is that place. And uh, we've been doing this since the mid eighties and uh, every two years. And, you know, we're thrilled to be in Detroit because yeah. if you kind of throw a circle, you know, Detroit, Chicago, maybe yep. over to Pittsburgh, maybe as wide as Minnesota, you know, Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, that's 80 percent. Of course, we have. There's a few things going on. A few things going on. <laughs> a few yeah. things going on. Probably 80 percent of the market is in this space. Well, so let me ask you yeah. this. Let's shift gears. Ah, so to speak. I wish we could get a nickel for every time uh -huh. someone uses that. It's like, swear, like a trademark yes. uh, thing. I, I didn't make that one up. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's not new, <laughs> folks. Uh, no, but how on earth does someone get into what you do? <laughs> on the association side? Yeah. You know, for me, it was it was a little bit of luck. You know, I, I, I backed yeah. into it. You know, Jim, I came out of college, George Mason University, being able to write a sentence, right? It was an English degree, concentration of <laughs> writing. And, yep. and my ability after my own heart. Of course. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> well, I, I actually generally when I speak to groups, I, I really do say that writing is a skill that is, is really helpful and, and uh, beneficial to anyone's career. Sure. Um, what I was able to do, Jim, is take complex information and narrow it down to, you know, what, what needed to be said, whether yeah. it was in a speech, a press release or, you know, a biography even. And uh, that's where I started. I was Bursa Marsteller doing public relations at the corporate level for, for that public affairs group. And, uh, and a job came open for a director of communications position at an association. And I spent 12 years there. Mm -hmm. And it was the Packaging Machinery Association, PMMI. And oh, I started as a communications person. Then my boss left. I was membership and then meetings and then IT and then mm -hmm. anything basically. My boss at the time, Chuck Yuska, good, good, good guy, good mentor. Um, didn't want to do, he's like, here, do this. Right. And, <laughs> yes. uh, that well, gave me the broadened <laughs> skills that you oh, needed good. to have. It yeah. gave me the opportunity to work with people, have people work for me, develop budgets, hit a, hit a number, you know, financial. And 12 years later, I, I applied for the CEO position at, uh, ASC, mm -hmm. uh, adhesive and sealants. And then I, I, uh, six and a half years later, I, I applied for this. I've been here seven years. Nice. Yeah, so how do I get into it? You kind of back into it and you just put your name out there and a uh, collection of different skills. Now, the other thing, Jim, is I live in the Washington, D.C. area. And so for those that, you know, aren't familiar with D.C., it's 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 the association capital of the United States. Oh, sure. Right. So yeah. and there's an association for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it was kind of like, OK, I don't want to teach. I don't want to, you know, be a lawyer or, you know, something like that. So. The association community needed writers, needed that kind of skill set. And mm -hmm. then I was able to round it out over the years. But I, I can't tell you now, looking back on it, because I'm, you know, I'm at, I'm at 30 years now or so in, in working world. And uh, 20, I actually pegged my association spirits by my daughter when she was born. Nice. She's 26 now. So 26 uh -huh. years I've been in, in this in this sector. It's incredibly thrilling to be able to work closely with CEOs 
you know, titans of industry for their little market, right? Their sector. Yep. And um, and swim in their their headspace and, and where are they going strategically and what are they thinking about? What are the challenges that we face as a, as a country, as a globe? You know, uh, mm -hmm. um, how do we manage uh, the changing technology? I mean, you know, when I started, there was the internet, no internet. Yeah. You know, I, and my crazy. first internet, you know, Lotus Notes was the first <laughs> thing for me in 94, I think it was. Yep. And so, you know, gosh, all of that changes. And then now we're talking about additive yeah. and EV and right. being in that spot where you can hear all of these voices and then you're working with CEOs to try to ensure that our association is delivering the classes they need, mm -hmm. the trade show they need, the standards they need. This is the exciting part about working in an association is that yeah. you're at that cutting edge of where things are are now and where they need to be. Yeah. And you're trying to drive that support. So yeah. I, I am so thankful, appreciative. And then um, on a personal note, I've been able to travel the world 47 states. So nice. I, I have a um, I have a Mississippi, uh, North Dakota, and Alaska to get to, okay. and I'll, I'll I'll check that box. And I don't know if I'll reach those, but yeah, uh, it's been fun to see that. I go to India once a year, Germany uh, often. I've been to you know China four or five times. Uh, glo you know, gears are in everything, and they also are on a global passport. They are everywhere, and so Absolutely. that's been a, a real you know. 1988 high school graduate Matt Croson. Never right. imagined he would be doing these <laughs> kinds of things, and it's a blessing, truly. You. Well, but, I'm right there with you. I mean, here yeah. I am uh, broadcasting literally to the world right? from downtown Detroit here. So. Oh, and you're getting five, seven, up to 11,000 viewers and stuff. That's that's an amazing it's pretty cool. storyline, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, so you mentioned, you know, the basics of what people come to these shows for. Yeah. What is the AGMA thinking about as far as, you know, what are your aims for the expo? Yeah. Yeah. I, I could tell you straight up. There's there's two elements of it. One is just a very practical thing. And and I, I don't care who you are as a trade show organizer, what size and scale uh, your show is, because, you know, we're a niche. We are a very small show, 40, 44,000 square feet versus 1.2 million for PAC Expo or, you know, a million for IMTS. So. Yep. Yep. It's not about volume for us, but it always is about bringing the right audience. Mm -hmm. And so that's number one. You, you have to, you have to uh, uh, you know, attract the right audience, make sure they understand what the dynamic is, why it's beneficial, and that's what we've been building over time. Yep. And, and, and that's what you're going to see over the next few days. From a practical standpoint, though, to be very honest, we are still coming back from COVID. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, our show in 2021 was was a challenging one. We were the first industrial show to come back. We were in St. Louis that year, and um, and it was tough. And so part of this now, uh, we're proud and thrilled to know that we have about 2,000 people coming, and that's equal to the 2019 show. Oh, so we're excellent. back to pre-COVID numbers. And I think that that's an important you know signal for... Yeah. For, for industry in general, that yep. people are getting back out, they're doing things and they're connecting. But any trade show does, the first and foremost is connecting buyers and sellers. The second thing they do is establish a network and create mm -hmm. that. And then the third thing is they educate people. And that's what we do. We have a number of activations and events. Uh, you know, I was at the Women in Manufacturing Network this morning. We have the Fall Technical Meeting Awards lunch this afternoon. We're going to have a magazine event tonight to, to thank our authors. Yeah. You know, throughout the week, there's several different events that bring different sectors of this whole world together. In addition, you know, vendors, suppliers have their own dinners and their networking yeah. events. So, you know, we're, we're convening the industry and then giving them opportunities to talk about different aspects of what is out there. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty what, good. For you personally, what, what do you think the highlights are going to be? Okay, yeah. I, I think one of the ma major highlights for us is going to be the EV town hall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have something on Thursday. So we're a standards body. We're, you know, a standards development organization, an SDO. Mm -hmm. So we, we fall under the ANSI guidelines, and we've been promulgating. A, that's why we started in, in 1916. And when Ford came to us and said, we love your gears, but you're all over the place, and we need to standardize this. So I understand that if I buy a gear, 
it's a gear, it's a gear, it's a gear. Yep. And 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 we need to understand that it will work. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, uh, what's happening now with EV and um, the emergence of the use of EV, not just with automotive, but in other applications, yep. we're getting to the point uh, that we feel like we need to update some of our standards in the okay. area of torque ratio, in the area of NVH, you know, in the area of metallurgy properties and, and some of those and, and even testing. Um, and so we're going to have a town hall meeting. We have 392 people as of this morning who have signed up for it. So that's probably one of our larger technical gatherings. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask the industry, you know, what would you like us to do in this area? What would you prioritize for us? Um, is it NVH? Is it, you know, uh, other things? And what we need from the industry is a commitment to share data. Uh, yes. Because without the data, you can't create a standard. And yep. so as an organization, we're going to explain to them that we don't need a new standard. We have an NVH standard. What we would need to add is a page or two or maybe mm -hmm. even a booklet on yep. NVH as it relates to EVs. Right. Same thing with any of the other things. And so I'm most excited about that because that kind of brings together both emerging technology and then the tradition of our standards development process. And we've got people from Rivian, GM, Ford. We have people from Tesla here. We also have all the machine tool folks that need to create the finished product for them. And um, the thing that we were talking about earlier and laughing a little bit about is that you're right. You know, EV does not mean no gears. No. You know, instead of 50 or 50, 40 to 50 in a you know, standard eight uh, set for a car, uh, you, you're probably going to need about six to 10. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the RPM goes from zero to, you know, 60 or, <laughs> yeah. or more. Yeah. Uh, and that RPM takes it up to 12,000, you know, high RPM levels, like yeah. almost Formula One, I, you know, I, RPM levels. And you can't take that down, you know, using electricity because, you know, it turns on, turns off, well, you'll destroy, you know. So yeah. you need speed yeah. reducers, what they're called. And those are gear systems that take that speed down. Mm -hmm to a manageable uh, RPM so you don't burn out your engine. Yep. Well, and, and, and the um, torques are insane. Yeah. Insane. So a whole other world of technical challenge, just I imagine. From it is. And, and what we found is that the EV uh, gears for EV um, are louder. Yep. And so they actually need an incredible amount of uh, what they call grinding at the end uh, and, and to, to get the right fit for the system to lower the NVH. And so, you know, even, you know, there was folks early on saying, oh, Mo, this is going to be bad for the, the, the machine tool folks, and it's not. Yeah. There's going to be incredible investment in certain aspects of uh, that finished production right. uh, process. So, right. yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's going to be, I think, one of the more exciting things that occurs. Um, and again, it's another indication of, you know, you wouldn't do that as a as a company, right? You know, bring the industry together to talk about how we know you want to ha own the solution. Yep. But in any maturing industry, everywhere across, you know, everything, um, you need safety standards, you need production standards, you need uh, quality standards, right. and associations are given that opportunity by the government uh, so that we bring a consensus-driven effort. We get, you know, you vote on technical matters, not. I don't like that company, so I'm saying no. <laughs> and and it, and it's 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 a, it's a fair process, yep. and that's what we want to make sure happen. Yep. Yeah. Well, so I know it's hard for you right now to think beyond these next few days of uh, craziness here at the show. But when you think about longer into the future with AGMA and, and the gear world, what what do you see coming down the pike that people should be thinking about or preparing for? Or... Yeah. Um, okay. So. I'll just say it, say it this way because I have a board meeting in about four weeks, and so I could tell you some of the agenda items, right? Without um, giving away any no, 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 it's all, it, no. In fact, it's it's an open dialogue that we're we're, yeah. we're constantly having. One of the biggest trends that we're all dealing with is the number of mergers and acquisitions that are occurring, and so um, what's happening ultimately is there's a little bit of a bifurcation of the, the industry on the gear manufacturing side, mm -hmm. and that means that the larger companies are getting larger. And the smaller companies are staying the same size, right? Yeah. And so this middle ground, right, these, this $100 million group is being bought up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, you know, um, 
That's fewer suppliers. That could lead to supply chain issues. Yep. It could lead yep. to production issues. Um, CEOs of billion dollar companies think about different things than CEOs of $5 million companies. And so as an association, trying to balance that. And so, you know, we're, we're really talking very carefully about over the next 15 years, what could happen and what needs to change as an organization. And we're going to be talking about a 10 year plan for, yeah. for AGMA, where yeah. we're going to talk about the technical changes that are occurring, uh, the, the, uh, the, like EV, like additive, and then the corporate things that are changing, company makeup, the people who run the company. And then finally, what, what human and physical resources that the association needs to develop over the next few years to kind of make sure we're relevant, we're at the center of the power transmission world, and, and really delivering our, 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 our vision. AGMA and its members drive power transmission innovation. That's our vision. And so wherever power transmission innovation is going, we will need to be in the middle of it and be there with them. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting time. As a, to further illustrate the point, we predicted in 2019, 2020, that we would have 40 mergers by 2030. We've already had 20. And it's, you know, three years in. Your, your prediction's looking pretty good. We're, I mean, we're predicting, right? We're just yeah. getting the timing wrong. And now, you know, and, and so, yeah, um, that, that's an interesting thing. Other than that, yeah, from a technology standpoint, additive, EV are the major things that we're, we're really um, committing time and effort on. Uh, well, robotics uh, as well, because oh, we yeah. think internally from a manufacturing process, we want more people and we're going to do our best to get people interested in this industry. Mm -hmm. And we have get into gears programs. We have the foundation raising money for scholarships and, and advancing the, the career of gearing. But we also know that we can't wait. And so automation is going to be a critical success factor for any gear manufacturer. Sure. Yep. And we, we're really optimistic about the robotics industry because it's moved so far from really expensive, super, mm -hmm. like only Ford and GM can afford right. this, down to cobots and small tabletop things that can work side by side to move gears from one yep. other. and and. This is a positive, I think. Yep. So we have seven robotics companies here that are designed for the small to mid-sized manufacturer to try to help them with their production. I have so. to imagine electrification is pretty Absolutely. Uh, big on your minds, so yeah. whether it's gears for wind turbines or yeah. you know, the hopeful... Um, so that's a media. market opportunity for us. I oh, mean, heck yeah. You, yep. you should see the size of the... the the enclosed gearbox that oh. turns a turbine. And then there's another one that they, they need... To, to turn the blades, yeah. right? Yeah. And and um, that whole system, once it's in, you know, it, it maintain maintenance and, and that's exploding yep. Uh, yep. on the on the scene, and, and it's exciting up yeah. opportunity. Yeah, it looks like nuclear may mm -hmm. also be coming back, and that's a whole other application for the big things. It absolutely is. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and and so before we wrap up, we're we're down to the last several minutes here. Um, yeah. Don't want to just focus on work. <laughs> What? Yeah. What shows are you going to see? Uh, <laughs> what, what yeah, my, my wife fun? just got back from Kelly Clarkson, One Republic, and uh, Maroon Five, I think it was. Uh, so that's not quite your 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 oh, spin. It's yeah. not my thing, but I, I don't criticize. Oh no, music, music, right? Good energy, yep. good anything. Yep. No, you know, you know, my life uh, is is blessed right now. Our, my our three children, Tracy, I've been married twenty eight years as of the fourteenth, and uh, our three kids. Thank you. Yeah. You know, my oldest, who I track association participation, yep. Yep. is thriving in Miami Beach, working as a special education teacher. My son, Tyler, is going to graduate here from Virginia Tech with a degree in, in um, uh, horticulture and going to go oh, into landscaping, wow. and landscaping. And he got a job. So, you know, not too much of a boomerang coming back. He's going to go out there and fly, fly, fly. Excellent. And our youngest son, Ryan, is uh, in his sophomore year at Florida Atlantic. Uh, look, well, actually, he might be in the association space at some point. He's a... Yeah. Uh, He's in the uh, um, um, uh, meetings and um, hospitality and tourism. Oh, sorry. heck yeah. Uh, so yeah. coming at it from a different angle. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. And, and but, I'm telling but you. No less critical. Look, one of the biggest things association does is hold meetings. Uh -huh. And it's not, you know, meetings are trade shows with thousands of square feet. Meetings right? are also 10 people in a boardroom. Yep. But um, that's what we're focusing on is our kids and uh our two cats at home and uh, maybe being a little empty nesters and enjoying some uh, 
you know, quieter evenings and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dinners alone, which is, which is pleasant. Yeah, yeah. it's very interesting. We're uh, a little behind you on, on the age. My two sons are 18 and 15. But, okay. You know, you get to that point where, um, like the 18 year old yeah. really don't see him too much. Right. They wake up around <laughs> one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's working. Back. He's going to right. community college. So he's off yeah, you know, yeah, on, yeah. on his own. Um, the younger one's yeah. in marching band and he just yeah. finished tennis and he's a sophomore yeah. in high school. So yeah. see him a little more, yeah. uh, track, uh, drag him around to his various things. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see down the road that yeah. it's not too many years before they're yeah. off doing what yours are doing. And, and what's been keeping me happy at work has been working with really wonderful, you know, caring, passionate people about our industry yep. who are younger and, um, um, you know, they're, 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 they have new ideas. They want to yep. take things and try things and getting into that dynamic of like, you know, you know, we have these grand strategies and you have the board meetings yeah, and sure. these ideas and things, and then trying to turn that into an operational plan mm -hmm. and giving folks opportunity to just run with some things yep. and see where it goes yeah. and be comfortable with them failing a little bit, but then, you know, getting them, you know, wherever we need to go. Uh, it's just been so gratifying and fun. We have a wonderful 20 person team at AGMA and it, it it's, it's a nice blend of, uh, we have about a quarter of the, the, the membership, uh, staff yep. is under, under a uh, one year to two oh, wow. years. Yeah. And then we have another side where I have, you know, Jenny Blackford's 24 years, yeah. you know, yeah. other folks that have been there for a long time, yep. which is wonderful too. Right. Oh, so you have this yeah. nice blend of, 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 you know, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, you know, that internal knowledge that that's mm -hmm. there of sure. the people and the process, but then the new fresh energy that's been just so exciting yeah. to kind of be around that dynamic. You know, it's interesting for me because I've spent my whole career in industry, yeah. you know, out in manufacturing, yeah. making stuff. And, yeah. and it's a very different world, you know, when I think about what you guys do, but as you talk about it, you're still under the same kinds of pressures to deliver the goods and, um, yeah, we are. Yeah. No, there, new there's a PL, there, there's a growth target. There's there's an understanding that yeah, we're nonprofit, but you know, you still have to have sensible spending so that you're not wasting money and right. it's the members' yep. money. Yep. Um, but I think one of the things I'm proud of is that we laugh a lot at work. That is you work critical. with Becky and, and, and it, yep. it's a wonderful yep. dynamic she brings and um and, and I think that's important, right? we you know, uh -huh. it's a small life, a short life. Um, you know, if you're not having uh, some level of fun at what you're doing. What are you doing? Go, yeah, go maybe, do something Maybe else. try something different I, because, you know. Um, I've long had it as a rule, you know, in, in the manufacturing world, it's pretty typical to have a meeting with the leadership group of the plant first yeah. thing in the morning. Right. And I've long had it as a rule that if we don't all have a good laugh in that meeting, we failed. Right. So There's a I'm truth right there to it. with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, life is too short. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too short. Oh, nose to the grindstone is fine, but you yeah, know, no, you got to take you seriously. There's moments and times, and you have to have the passion and things like that. But yep. you know, we're together a lot of time, and right. um, if you can't laugh a little bit, enjoy each other's company. That's that's you know, figure that out. Yeah, go find something else. Yeah, it's a long time there's, to be wasted. There's a lot of stuff to do out there, folks, especially so. in manufacturing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Jim. so. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, this is yo, a no. great way to kick off the day. I know you're I'm a really busy you man here. out here. No, no, this is great. Yeah, Like I said, you know, uh, at this point, they point me in the right direction and tell me when to show up because, <laughs> yes. you know, I, yep. I, as I joke with them, it's all over but the crying. You know, the, the train has left the station. We're here. Wonderful. Yeah, let's enjoy it. So yep. thank you, Jim. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt Croson, president yep. of the American Gear Manufacturers Association. Yep. They're putting on where I am today at the Motion and Power Technology Detroit. Expo in downtown Detroit at Huntington Place. Detroit Rock City. We are wrapping up this one. I've got a whole day of these things, folks. It is awesome. I'm going to be talking to people from all over yeah. this gear-making world. Um, next up is is Lori Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had her Lori early Brown's because great, yeah. she does forging. Yeah. The company's IMT yeah. Forge. Kind of the first step of making gears, right? Or I tell you what, you want to have fun. Go Google how to forge a gear and oh, enjoy yes. the pounding, the heat, yes. the you know the mold. Oh man, it's it's yep. amazing what they do. So stay tuned. We will be on with her in just uh, fifteen minutes or so, or yeah. something like that. 
Yeah, cool. 15 minutes. So we are finishing this one up. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks, Jim. We'll see you again soon. Right on. Thanks for tuning in to Manufacturing Talks with Jim Vanosky. Watch for new episodes dropping every Tuesday. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.